Hi, this is Hoda Beener from Devil's Digest. I'm over here with head coach Kenny Dillingham. And uh, Kenny, it's been, what, 25 days uh, on the job? Does it feel like 25 months, 25 years, 25 centuries? <laughs> yeah, probably years. <laughs> but uh, it's been exciting. It's been fun. What uh, has been uh, some of the uh, challenges that uh, may, may look like huge back in late November that maybe now in late December are not that much of a challenge? Well, obviously, scholarship numbers, you know, that's been something for us. We were we were about 30, 30 numbers, you know, which is roughly 35 to 40 percent of your roster behind where we should be. And I think we accomplished that. Uh, in this last year, in this signing class, uh, we fixed some of those problems, uh, and uh, we still got some work to do. But it was exciting. So just walk us uh, some of the challenges as, as a first year head coach with a, with a brand new staff. Uh, it's really hard to establish relationships with 2023 20, guys as a whole. It's probably more like 24, 25, 26 guys, and you guys did a good job with that as well. But um, when you look back at all the challenges, uh, were they greater or maybe not, not as great as you thought they would be? Oh, yeah, they were they were great. I mean, you can't fix a, a relationship with a kid in the state in three weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not going to be able to say, hey, I know you don't like this place right now because they didn't recruit you, but <laughs> look at us and then three weeks later sign seven kids that's not going to happen right and that's not fair what we wanted to do in the state was build a relationship with these kids so they knew who we were before they go off to college that was it right simple as that in the current day and age of college football right you have to build relationships with everybody because you don't know what's going to happen in one two three four years so that was probably the biggest challenge was trying to trying to kind of break down those barriers to some of the kids in the state in the 23 class and then try to break down those barriers at the 24 and 25 kids and start to build uh, those relationships. I think that um, obviously a lot of emphasis in recruiting uh, the in-state kids, but I think that when you look at the uh, hires of Brian Carrington, Rashad Samples, I know it's early. But it seems like you guys have hit a home run when it comes to Texas recruiting just based on the results that, that, that we saw yesterday. How pleased are you that not only you're doing well in the uh, quote unquote typical regions, but in Texas, you guys did great yesterday? Yeah, no question. I think that's one of the keys to this place is, you know, Texas is a two to two and a half hour flight. Right. And then from Dallas and the Houston airport. So that's a place that when you think about a kid driving over from Colorado or wherever state we're recruiting from. Right. Or flying in to an international airport that's six minutes from our facility, it'll take a kid from Dallas or Houston three to four hours door to door to leave their house, get to their airport, fly here, and walk into their, our building. No more than four and a half hours. When you have that, si that sort of convenience, right, it needs to be something you tap into. Well, when you look at the recruiting class, I know it's still like, you know, work, work in progress. Uh, was, it, was one maybe pleasant surprise, not so much a player, but just like an aspect that you think, wow, this went smoother than I thought it would be. Yeah, I think just in general, our coaches meshing. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have a new staff and you don't know each other, you know, we had a lot of coaches that I knew, a lot of coaches that somewhat knew each other, but even the guys that didn't, right? They all just meshed, right? And you can tell naturally when a staff likes each other. I think our staff genuinely likes each other. They genuinely want to be here and are happy they're here. And I think that's the thing I'm most pleased with is I can say with confidence that I'm going to be here. I can say with confidence the majority of our staff is going to be here. So when you drop your son or daughter off here to actually play football or to be involved in this program in any way, shape, or form, you know, man, there's going to be a consistency here from a coaching staff. And if you look at the teams around the country that have the most success, they have a lot of consistency uh, within their program from that standpoint. I'm not going to ask about each and every new assistant. Actually, I'm going to ask you about the uh, holdover assistant, Sean Aguano, somebody you've known for decades, I guess, at this point. But how important was it not only to have the personal relationship with him, but also to be that holdover, maybe to be that bridge from the old staff to the new staff? What uh, kind of benefits has it presented to you in the first 25 days? Yeah, it was huge. Just the comfort level of he knew hey, we can't do this on a visit. We've already talked about this. We can do this. This didn't work out last time. Okay, these kids. Talk about this. This kid, you know, his family grew up in Wisconsin, so we're probably not going to get him to, you know, get back involved because even though he's from here, his family grew up in Wisconsin, right? He's actually, you know, not really an Arizonian, or maybe he is. Whatever that is, uh, I'm just using examples of, of random places, but he got to really give the insider information of who our team was, what our team needed uh, the most, and then he got all the recruits that were recruiting. He had a good baseline uh, for things like that. 
And last question, I know recruiting never stops, but uh, at what point do you really have to like flip the page, talk about the returning players, talk about the new additions that are coming over here, and talk about spring practice? I've got to believe spring practice for a first-year head coach, their first spring practice, that is, is absolutely crucial to set the foundation. Yeah, no question. That was the first thing I did here was meet with our own players. That's the priority is our players, right? And that will always be my priority is recruiting. Everybody says recruiting won. That's uh, I completely disagree with that. The number one job of me is to help our players become successful. The players on our roster. Bottom line. The number two job is to get more players on our roster that we can help become successful. But I'll never put uh, a recruit ahead of a player on our roster. I don't think that's fair. Those kids chose to come here. Those kids want to be here. Uh, if I'm in a meeting with those guys and a recruit calls me, right, I'm staying in the meeting with those guys because that is priority one to me is our current roster. Okay, Kenny, thank you very much. Happy holidays to you and your family. Thank you. And for Hodor Rubino, Kenny Dillingham, this is Hodor Rubino from Devil's Digest.